Hey friends, uh, today I want to think about something that I've talked a little bit about before with the video that I made on art, but I want to take it from a very specific angle, which is uh, I want to talk about the state of mind that I'm in when I make art, and I'm curious about how to cross-apply that state of mind to other modalities of expression. Um, I started making visual art seriously about a year and a half ago and mostly doing digital art on Procreate on the iPad and I haven't made art literally every day during that time period but just I'd say I don't know most of that time I've made art pretty continuously and uh, I've done Inktober twice now making a drawing every day during October of both 2021 and 2022 planning to do that again this year, we'll see, but that's the intention. And it's been a really joyful activity for me. I love drawing and I'm very proud of the things that I make. And I'm very interested in the state of mind that I have when I make it because, you know, I, I drew as a kid, um, but I never really had very much formal art training. And it wasn't something that I did for my most of my 20s. There was one exception. There's a book that I uh, wrote that's like a autobiography of sorts, a short autobiography, and I, that's actually why I got my iPad originally was to draw drawings for that, and so that was an exception. I probably made like 10 or 12 drawings for that, but other than that, I really didn't do much drawing in my 20s and certainly haven't had any real formal training in it besides some art classes as a kid, and I think that, you know, there, it would be easy for me to have some kind of expectations on myself of, oh, this art should be good, or, you know, there's art that I've seen that I really like that I think is beautiful, and why can't I make something like that? And somehow I've managed to mostly escape that. Um, you know, I remember when I first started, the first drawing that I made, I tried to just make, like, really bad, intentionally about as bad as I could make it while still expressing something. and. I wanted to set the bar really low of just like, hey, I'm expressing myself, here we go, um, no problems. Whatever I do is intrinsically great. And um, there's almost this, it's, it's like the same state of mind as when you see a kid making art, like you see a doodle that they made and they put it up on their refrigerator. You're just like, wow, they made this piece of art and it shares who they are and they're proud of it and it's awesome even though Aesthetically, it's it's like a kid made it and it's not, you know, the most beautiful piece of art ever made. It's still them and it's still who they are and they're proud of it and they should be. And it's, it's beautiful in that way, um, regardless of what they drew or how they drew it. Like the very act of expression is beautiful and you can really see that when you look at a, a drawing that a kid makes or something like that, some kind of creative expression that they have. And so it, it's like that for me, except inside when I'm the person making it just like, wow, it's awesome that I drew this and I had fun making it and I'm proud of it no matter how it looks. And that's been a really fruitful state of mind to cultivate for making visual art as I've done this more and more. Uh, it's been easy to access that and my skill at visual art has improved over time. Um, you know, I'm not still not the best artist in the world, but there's a lot that I've learned and I've sort of tried a bunch of different styles and made some pieces that I really like and I've gotten to the point where I can use my art in my own writing which I'm really proud of especially because um, there's a kind of fitting between uh, the words that I'm expressing myself with and the art that I've made because it's all it's all me right um, so I love seeing that and at the same time this state of mind that I've cultivated so carefully with art feels very precarious where I'm not sure if I could pull it off right now with another creative medium. You know, the contrast to writing is really interesting because I have done a lot of writing practice and training formally over the years, pretty much continuously since at least high school, arguably since I was a kid. Yeah, there's various writing classes that I took and writing programs and I always loved reading books and loved, had certain writers. And um, there I have a similar equanimity with what I write, but it's because I have a sense of confidence in what I write and I just kind of know that if there's something I want to say I can say it well in writing given you know time and, and the opportunity 
Um, notable exception is, um, which I've also talked about, is when I wrote some fiction last year, I had some sort of like inner critic stuff come up of like, uh, this isn't good enough, what are people going to think, this is weird, this is different. That's that's because I've written less fiction than nonfiction and have less comfort with that and also, you know, had sort of specific aspirations with that. I think I mentioned in that video, but I, I used to want to write the great American novel when I was younger and I sort of had to almost reconnect to and reparent that aspiration of like connecting to what the, the real motivation was behind wanting to write fiction and um, separating that out from like a achievement or excellence that's deemed by others to be good but just you know connecting to my own internal motivation for expressing myself and um, loving narrative and story and that's a that's a healthier fuel than uh, you know wanting a specific award or something I mean I don't really remember exactly what it was like for me as a teenager but um, I think I think I, I there were various novels that I really loved and I knew how much they'd impacted me and I wanted to write something like that. Um, anyway, with generally with writing, I'm also sort of free of the inner critic with some notable exceptions, but for a very different reason because of a kind of confidence and skill and, and comfort and familiarity. And the, the unique thing for me about art is having this state of mind of equanimity, acceptance, allowance, just knowing that it's beautiful to express myself without needing it to be a certain standard of quality or excellence um, in a domain that I don't have much formal training in. And I've seen both how that makes it internally joyful for me and allows me actually to improve over time because the stakes are low. I don't I don't care if I make something bad. In fact, I kind of have fun making something like bad. Um, it, it, usually I learn something even from that. And so the question for me is how do I access that same state of mind with creative mediums where I really do care about what I make? Is there a way to replicate the state of mind with other domains? And in particular, I'm thinking about music. I'd like to, we'll see how this goes. Who knows how this story ends, but God willing, I'd like to learn to DJ this year and later make music. And I love music and there's, you know, I've kind of cultivated my taste in it over time and there's music that I really love and I want to use it for my dance parties for very specific reasons, you know, for this sort of idea of meta dance parties, um, cultivating loving kindness through beautiful music and dance. And there's kind of an ideal or a standard there. And, and also I like art, I don't have, uh, you know, formal training. I have had a lot of vocal training over the years and a little bit of music theory and piano back in the day, but, but basically I'm starting from scratch with these skills. And uh, I want to see as I go into this particular endeavor this year, is it possible to find that state of mind, even acknowledging that I care about the outcomes? Can I have equanimity and, and freedom to mess up and make things that are bad, even if I care about what I'm doing and, and want it to look a certain way eventually or, or sound a certain way or um, there's some kind of direction I'm orienting to. and. You know, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what the internal move is that I do with art. I know sometimes I make things that are intentionally bad and that's really helpful or like that's what I sort of started with. And um, I think there's a there's a sense of self-love of just like, wow, I made something and this, this is great and admiring what I do like about it and not being too upset about uh, the negatives. And I think something I've also done that's been really helpful is, I don't know, I really like validation and so I'll, I'll post the art that I make and I love it when people like like my tweets on Twitter or you know on Instagram when I share my art there and um, you know they say hey this is good I really appreciate that validation and so I think sharing any like DJ sets I do or, or music that I make eventually with people that are sort of safe and going to be encouraging and friendly even if it's not like the best thing ever that would be really supportive and I, I'm blessed to have lots of people like that in my life um, but but fundamentally even even beyond these like tips or tricks there's there's a I can feel it when I make art there's a state of mind a kind of presence that I bring to it that that I've just through repetition been able to find and access and repeat through doing art in particular and I, I, I the, the sort of open question that I'm holding is can I find that same flavor of experience while doing something totally different so we'll see um, I think reflecting on things like this kind of sets the soil for 
this to be possible and I'm excited to see what happens both with this endeavor that scares me a little bit of DJing and music production but also um, more broadly with other domains where I care about the outcome and yet want to find that kind of equanimity allowing self-love just expression just enjoyment so we'll see what happens and thanks for listening